Lord. Howdy, everybody. Welcome to a channel update, such as it is. I apologize a little bit for my voice if it sounds a bit weirder than normal. It's because yesterday I was beset by allergies. Because it's juniper slash cedar season here, and I'm allergic to both of those things. It's, it's just the same thing, but with different names. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm... Uh, a little bit, I was snotty yesterday, so I'll try to edit out as many sniffles and sneezes, if I have them, as I can in this. But, yeah, I apologize for not doing a, a uh, channel update between chapter 2 of Vagrant and chapter 1 of Unblooded. I tried to, and whatever my camera records in is not a thing that Windows, uh, Windows Movie Maker, uh, Movie Studio, apparently it's not a thing that movie, movie Studio wants to work with. So, I'm making do now. Um, yeah. So, in the background, you are seeing me going through some mod testing with Cactus. Cactus in Bloom, my Argonian. He's just sort of a test character, as you can see. Um, I'm testing a whole bunch of Civil War mods right now because of a conversation that Couch Warrior had on an episode of uh, the Skyrim Unbound podcast, uh, talking about how he was implementing a couple of uh, Civil War mods at a time, like one at a time, every few levels, to make it seem like the war was getting worse in the background, which... I really like that idea, and I might be stealing it a little bit. So, I've got lots of Civil War mods going in the background right now. Um, I would list all of them, but the mod list is, as always, in the description. So, you can click on it there. Uh, it's, the other thing in the, in the description is the table of contents for all of the Boundless Saga. I think that's what I'm going to end up calling this, rather than just the Skyrim saga, because... I mean, it's a saga, don't get me wrong, but it needs a name, I think. Uh, and I can't really name it after one of the characters, so it's, it's probably going to be Boundless, I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, what I wanted to say the last time I attempted to do a channel update, which I didn't get to, um, I believe that time was... right, I was going to talk about... Zaytest, Ingrath, and Yarnvita, because those were the three relevant characters. Zaytest pretty much turned out as I expected that she would turn out. Um, every time I think I don't need two chapters to get into a character, I find myself going, Yeah, yeah, I really do. So, uh, Zaytest needed two chapters just because I had to make sure that she was going to work with Inigo. And I had to kind of figure out how I wanted to talk to slash around him. So I think that worked out pretty well. I kind of got the hang of it toward the end of chapter two. Ingrath was a surprise. He was really a surprise. Like I didn't expect- okay the story with him is that I kind of- he was supposed to be a test character. <laughs> yeah, I made him around the same time as I made Cactus. I was just having a day of, I want to play Skyrim, but I've got all these characters that are going to be for story and I don't know what to play, and so I made a boss- well, okay, first I made Cactus, and then I made Ingrath, and then I realized that he was probably most likely the Bosmer that saved Zaytest's life. So... yeah. <laughs> And I didn't expect him to be a character that was going to appear on video more than once. And then I did the Dark Season special. Um, and he's a character that a lot of people seem to enjoy, including myself. So, in fact, and I don't want to say that any of my characters are my favorite characters. They're all 
in some way or another, my favorite character. Like, they all have things about them that I love. Inrath is my favorite because... he He's my favorite in the sense that he has the most that I can do with him right at the moment. I can just kind of fling him into situations and see what happens. Um, he's the one that I can do the most story with. I can test narrative things with him. I can test... Um, like those voices, the, the memories that he hears. Uh, the, like, echoey bits of dialogue. Those are memories, mostly. Um, that was, that was fun to test. <laughs> the, uh, the, the dialogue that he has in the background with two characters who I will not name right at the moment, though one person, to my knowledge, has figured out who one of the voices is. The other one Pretty much I expect nobody to figure it out because it's one that I kind of made up. But one of them is a character in the lore. And I do believe 57 Strudel is the one who has figured out who that voice is. I don't know if anybody else has. But yeah, I can test that kind of thing with him. I can test weird dream sequences. I think Ingrath is the character that has the most in common with all of the other characters. Uh, and some of it's just kind of superficial stuff, like he and Yarvid are both really old for their- well, not really old. Um, for an elf, Ingrath is about- I'd say his age is comparable to Arden's. Uh, for an elf, anyway. He's not 35. Arden's 35. Ingrath is about a hundred and something. 115, maybe. 114? I think? But, like, he's been around, he's seen a lot of stuff, and so has Yarnvita. And there's that. He and Zaytest are both... not... great people. <laughs> They're both kind of... underground sorts of people. And... that's all I'm going to say on that. So, yeah, Ingrath was a surprise. Yarnvita... Yarn Vita surprised me. Like, she was not a surprise. I knew that she, I was going to play this character and I knew that she was going to do the whole Forsworn conspiracy. Spoilers if you haven't actually watched Unblooded yet and are just watching this because... Yeah. But she did that thing. With the second chapter being called The Reachman, I kind of feel like that's a given. But yeah, Yarn Vita was kind of... I didn't expect her story to get as intense as it got at the end of chapter two. I really thought it was going to take longer than that for her to kind of come into her own as a character, I guess. She just kind of- it took a little while. It certainly took a little while for me to figure out who she was, really, and what, what was going on in her brain, and then she went through the whole conspiracy, and boy, howdy. Actually, no. I take it back. She went through the thing with Nepos. And I think that's the moment where I went, Oh, that's Yarvita. So, that was fun. Um, and I also kind of didn't expect her to get to the end of that and be a completely changed person. Like, I'm... We were talking about this on the Unbound pod. By we, I mean... Couch and Pals were talking about this in the Unbound podcast the other day. And the we that I mean are the we in the chat. I was in the chat. I'm a moderator, actually. But um, they were talking about uh, the engine and the fuel of a character. And um, Couch started talking about how a character who was basically... Their engine was revenge and their fuel was rage, could get to the end of a of a vengeance quest and that would be a transitional moment for them and they could either change their engine or go completely off the deep end. And I was sitting there in the chat going, have you been watching my videos? Because that's exactly what just happened with Yarn Vita. <laughs> so um, we'll see where she goes in her next chapter. I have no idea. Well, I, okay, I kind of have an idea, but I kind of don't. I'm 
she and Kinoa could both do a particular quest line and have it make sense. And it would come out kind of, it, it would be similar, but it would come out in two completely different ways. And I'm trying to figure out which version of that story I want to tell, if that makes sense. I'm not sure if it does. I'm not going to tell which quest line that is. Um, it might be obvious, it might not. I'm not sure, but like there have been... Yeah, speaking of Kinoa, Kinoa is next. Honorless is making a grand reappearance for the first time in like a year. Um, after I did... We'll call them build test episodes, because I honestly had no idea what I was doing at that point. And yeah, I didn't know how I wanted to introduce the character, how I wanted to play the character. Kinoa has gone through some reworks. I think I mentioned that in another channel update, I'm not sure. But Kinoa has gone through some um, build changes, so... She no longer relies as heavily on a bow. She's more of a... she She's still a, a spear and board character. <laughs> she's still... Uh, her preferred weapon is a short spear, and she goes around with a shield. It's really interesting playing Kinoa after playing Bargast, who is bound sword and shield. So... I was trying to think of a sword and board alternative with bound sword, but... I don't know, it doesn't spell and board. <laughs> I think that's what I've been calling him, spell and board. Rather than spell and sword, which is what Arden's doing. But yeah, Kinua, um, I figured out how I wanted to introduce her. <laughs> I'm evil laughing right now because I know what the first episode is like. I've edited the first episode, I haven't uploaded it yet. Um, Honorless. Uh, chapter 1, episode 1, properly this time, of Honorless, should be airing Tuesday, April 10th, 2018. So, that's gonna be fun, and you can all see why I'm evil laughing right now, because it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Um, yeah, she is, so far, I've, I've voiced three episodes of her, and she is pretty much exactly as I pictured her being. She, there's nothing... Nothing terribly surprising about her yet. So, I don't know. She's... Uh, in terms of... I'd say personality. In terms of the way that... Kinoa reacts to people in dialogue, I guess. It, she's... The most similar to me, so it's pretty easy to roleplay her. I just have to kind of picture myself in a really big crowd all the time, and then I can just do her voice and and respond the way that she would respond to things. Um, she actually has a little bit of a higher voice than I do, but that's easy for me, as you can all- you, you all heard me voice as a test for that whole time, and yeah, I can do- I have a really big range. Oh crap. Whoa. Anyway. Yeah. Kinwa is coming. She will be here soon, and it's gonna be good. Um, I've been taking notes. I have been taking notes both from, uh, what, J15951, the dude playing Set Sarandus, the Technomancer, or the Dunmer who will at some point be a Technomancer, I believe in him. Um, especially kind of his earlier videos, he had a couple of, um, interesting like, rituals that he did in service to Boethia, I believe? I might have that wrong. I'm trying to remember who the... the tribunal... not the tribunal, the... It's Azura, Boethia, and somebody else, and I can't remember who, and I don't want to look it up, but I know Azura and Boethia are two of the Dunmer, like, the not the house of troubles, but the other ones. <laughs> I they might be those might be the hell. I don't I don't know. I'm not up on my Dunmer lore, which is why I'm not playing a Dunmer character. Yay! <laughs> or if I do, I'm gonna be playing an Ashlander who was raised by Nords. So there's that. But I've been taking notes on, or from I suppose Jay and from 
uh, Couch Warrior's latest character concept, um, Barbarian, Ida Stag. Oh boy. <laughs> um, I've, I've kind of, I have some ideas, not for Kinoa, but for a different character that kind of are Ida Stag-ish. They, like, it has the same kind of feeling, the, the things, the, the kind of rituals and whatnot, but it's not the same. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna just steal a thing from somebody else. That's, that's stealing and that's bad and it's not exactly the most creative thing in the world. So, uh, basically I'm, I'm, I'm stealing the idea of having rituals for a character like um like spiritual rituals for a character rather than just the rituals themselves uh which is something that i kind of had planned for kinoa anyway she's a shaman or she's kind of been called to be a shaman even though she doesn't really know what that means right at the moment um basically her idea of a shaman right now is something similar to an ashaba Similar words, I guess. Um, but it, she's not an Ashaba and she knows that and that's why she headed to Skyrim instead of ending up with the Ashaba in Hammerfell. Because she doesn't really want to be seen as that kind of person. And she doesn't really feel like she has a duty to cleanse the world of the undead either. She wants to heal people, but she also has kind of some magic things going on with her that she doesn't quite understand. And quite honestly, what she knows of the Nords probably is more in line with the Skull rather than the Nords. <laughs> because the Nords don't have shamans, but the Skull do. So that's probably where she got that from. Um, so yeah, she's gonna have some rituals that she does. She's gonna have some weird things going on. It's gonna be a good time! And there's- interestingly enough, we do have another very shaman -y character in the mix that I didn't- I did not expect at all. Um, it might- it might be obvious to a few people who that is, but it's- might not be. Um, I'm- I'm kind of tempted to just say who it was. Or is, I suppose. But like, I kind of want to leave that for when I show off those particular rituals that I wanted to do and show off and whatnot. There's, there is one character who has a very, very fleshed out belief system. Um, you know what? Screw it! Screw it, it's, it's kind of spoilery, but given that it's a character backstory kind of thing that I don't know when I'll ever be able to implement, it's Ingrath, which was a surprise. <laughs> uh, so Ingrath and Kinua are similar because they're both slightly shaman -y, but like different permutations of the thing. So it, it's more like... Kinoa is a healer shaman, and Ingrath is not. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Just he's he's not much of a healer. So, yeah. Speaking of Ingrath, by the way, I would like to thank the patrons for making that possible, or at least being there when I uh, when I release his videos early. That's I, f I feel like I should mention that Executioner is a series that. Um, I do release episodes of that early to my patrons. You j it, one dollar or more, there's there's no real boundary on that particular thing. Especially since I do also release them to the public eventually. Like, it, it feels- it would feel weird to me to have five dollar patrons be able to see Ingrath early, and then just- they get released to the public a week or two weeks or a month later. It's- I'm still working on the Patreon thing. I'm- it's, uh, weird. It's- I'm working on it. <laughs> um, I'll- I'll talk about my- my plans for that later. Uh, I wanted to say that we should be getting back around to Arden, back to Intonation, sometime in June. 
if the schedule holds up, I'm gonna keep doing four videos a week. Whew, I'm gonna keep doing four videos a week as long as I possibly can. Um, I have a few days here that I can kind of get um, some voice work done and get stuff edited and uploaded so that I don't have to, or so that I don't end up with like a big, like say I run into the into finals week or something and I end up behind on videos but then I also have finals. I only have one class but finals. Um, yeah, that would be bad. So I have a couple days here where I do have a commission that's kind of in the works that has been agreed upon in a way that I haven't actually sketched yet but I'm going to make the decision to put it off a little bit so that I can get videos caught up so that I can work on other stuff without having to worry about keeping voice and um, videos updated. If that makes sense, I'm doing my best to adults. I'm doing my best. So yeah, the long story short, I'm gonna keep the schedule at four episodes a week. Which means we should be getting to the end of Honorless Chapter 1 in about the first week of May. Which means that Arden should be coming back around the second week of June, I believe, if I've got my schedule correct. And I also haven't played through chapter two of Honorless, so I don't know how long it's going to be. I know how long the first app, the first chapter is going to be. Because I played through it and a little bit into chapter two just because that's where my best stopping point was. There some stuff happens. It's gonna be good. Um, yeah. The, the prologue that I did, by the way, for the last iteration of Kinoa, the last iteration of um, Honorlist, Honorless, that is still canon, by the way. I just... There's, there's too much work to make a new one. I would, like, had I given myself more time, I probably would have gone and grabbed the, uh, the Grey Cowl of Nocturnal mod, just so that I could get some clips of Kinoa in Hammerfell, but I decided against it, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll just end up heading straight in a, into her story. If you want to go back and watch the... The prologue, it's around somewhere, and it'll be in the playlist, so yeah, there's that. Kid was next. Should be getting back to Arden in June. I do have notes here that I'm sort of following. Um, plans? Oh, uh, first schedule, the the schedule after Honorless Chapter 2. We're, we're gonna be getting back to Arden, and then when that happens, I'm going to be switching it to Rather than having two chapters at a time, I'm just gonna go one chapter at a time. So we'll do, we'll get to the end of Honorless Chapter 2, and then we'll do Intonation Chapter 3, Vagrant Chapter 3, Unblooded Chapter 3, and Honorless Chapter 3, with Ingrath interspersed between all of the things, depending on what his story is doing. Right at the moment, his main role is as connective tissue kind of, like, narrative connective tissue. Because he's the one who has stuff in common with every other character, and the other ones don't know about each other yet, but he does! He knows about three of the four other characters at this point. So, yeah. I'm not sure how or if he is going to meet Kinoa at any point, but yeah, I- that's- th that's a thing. He has- uh, kind of interacted with all- with the other three, with Zaytest, Arden, and Yarnvita, so. Whether or not they are aware of his presence right at the moment is another story. Pretty much the answer is, eh? <laughs> um, right, okay. Speaking of Ingrath, Patreon plans, because, yeah, I brought that up earlier and didn't say anything about it. Um, I liked the thing that I did with Bargast. I liked the thing that Bargast unbothered. <laughs> He's my unbound character. Unbound is a kind of, um, 
a character roleplay challenge by Couch Warrior TV. I'm not. I I've. I've dropped the ball so hard with it, but like. I know things about Bargas now that I didn't know when I started playing him. I need to catch up with writing his little short stories, his his journal, I suppose. But I liked the, this is where this is going. I liked what I did with just having the mic on and talking while I was playing. I think that worked out really well from just a um like a kind of behind the scenes place. So I might end up doing that a bit more with uh, for for patrons, so that I can have like little behind the scenes bits every now and again, like what I'm doing now with uh, with Cactus with this mod testing. Um, I can just go in with the camera on and <laughs> have things happen that I wasn't expecting. Like I don't remember if I got a clip of him running through a gigantic battle, but yeah, there's. Oh boy, there's it all these mods, it's going to be cool. Um so I did I did in in my pledge note thingies, in my pledge levels. I did promise I think $5 and up patrons behind the scenes videos. I've not done one of those yet because it's been I've been doing all this other stuff, but I think that kind of playing with the mic on thing might be what I do for behind the scenes. It just that makes sense to me. Um, the other thing that I'm testing right at the moment is audio short stories. Um, that's one of the things that I've always wanted to do. Like voice acting in general is a thing that I have always wanted to do since I was a little tiny person. I've always wanted to be a voice actor. But I wrote like a while ago to get into character for Ingrath and Zay Test. Or or get more of a an idea of what the two of them were like and how they met. I actually wrote a short story, like, several months back, and have now gotten around to doing a voice track for it, in which my voice didn't die halfway through, because Ingrath's voice is difficult for me to do, obviously, and I have to pitch it down just so that it doesn't sound like me doing weird things with my throat. That sounded bad, but yeah, that's a thing that I might end up doing more of in the future, audio short stories. I might put up polls every once in a while, like, hey, who wants to know what about what character? Like, backstory-wise. Like, do we want a short story about Yarnvita and Lopdeer, for instance? Do we want a short story about Kinoa and her mother? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. There's a, there's a lot of opportunity for short stories, and so I feel like that's that could be a thing. Um, it, it's currently a work in progress. I'm testing it. We'll see. I had the wild hair at one point to turn that short story into a comic, but I, seeing as I am utter crap at sequential art, like comics and animation, I'm probably not. So, yeah, that's the thing. Um... Crossover will happen. I definitely like. I I feel the need to point this out. I put this in my notes. I can't really remember why, but I think it was to point out that yes, all five of these characters and all of their stories are connected, and they will all eventually, eventually, come together and be one big team, and it's gonna be awesome. And I would like to thank. Couch Warrior TV for inspiring me to do this in the first place. Like, Couch is who is, like, I think Etienne actually was the character that inspired me to do or try Kinua the first time. And so it feels appropriate to thank Couch again now that I'm coming back to Kinua since she was the one who started this whole thing, kind of. But, uh, his. Uh, the, the Character Crusade podcast talking about the Skyrim Epicosity project, I believe. It was a thing that was mentioned in some of their earlier videos where you get a whole bunch of characters and they all do different quest lines. So you get this sort of completionist thing going. But then you put them all together and they end up being one big group. Like a, a team and then you go down like like you you do the big end quests, if that makes sense. 
like whoever you would think of as a boss. For some people that might be Harkon, for some people that might be Mirak, for some that might be Alduin. For some you might like, I don't know, throw in a big quest mod and do that as the end thing. I don't know. Um, I have I have my own plans. I don't know how the heck they're gonna work out. I don't know how we're gonna get there from here, but I have plans. Um, I only know for sure how one of those bosses is going to... Mm, they're, they're all guys. I just realized that. So if I say his end, <laughs> you don't have a clue who I'm talking about. Because Alduin, Harkon, and Mirak are all men. Heh. <laughs> I win! No spoilers! No spoilers! Uh, anyway. So yeah, I would like to thank Couch Warrior TV for inspiring this whole Skyrim Epicosity project thing. Um, this, of course, the, I the original idea became a thing when Familiar Faces came out for- or- or- or, or was inspired by the Familiar Faces mod for Legendary Edition or Legacy- Legacy Skyrim at this point. But it's not out for SE, so basically I'm just gonna have to make a whole bunch of followers. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be so much work. And at this point, none of them are voiced properly because um, that's a lot of work. So if, if they end up being voiced, it'll be at some point in the future. Far in the future when I have time and the knowledge to do so. But crossover will happen. I don't know how, but it will. It's gonna be good. Um, probably. There has already been a little bit. If if you've caught up with, um, if you've caught up with Unblooded, if you're not a patron, or if you are a patron and you've caught up with Executioner, you know. <laughs> you know! So yeah, thanks to Couch Warrior TV. I would also like to thank all of my wonderful six patrons. <laughs> It's- it's astonishing to me that I have patrons! It's good. I am- I'm enjoying this whole thing immensely. Cause, I mean, I don't do the whole YouTube monetization thing. At this point, I feel like, for me, my channel is so small it's not really worth it. Which is why I have a Patreon and an Etsy store. And, of course, the Etsy store is for character commissions. So, yeah, there's that. Um, I might- I might expand that to like maps or something at some point, but not right now. So yeah, if you want to support me, there are many, 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 many ways! Cause I am not only somebody, a creator on Patreon, who you can support if you like my stuff. Um, I'm also an illustrator, a character artist, so you can commission me to draw a character of yours, or characters. Just saying. Um, just, I, I have a group limit of eight. I just want to point that out because I have done a commission with 21 characters in it before and I did not, I did not get paid enough for that. But whatever, it was, I, I learned a thing and it was, it came out pretty cool. I'm also an author and I have nine books. Nine books. I'm writing my ninth. I'm- I have eight books published. Three of which are available in paperback and the rest are available on Kindle and Kindle Unlimited. So yeah, links are all in the description. One more time I would like to give a round of applause <coughs> quietly to my patrons so that I don't like, make the mic do weird things. <laughs> um, oh goodness, I'm trying to remember all of your names off the top of my head. We've got Jay, we've got Simon, we've got uh, Strudel, we have Stu, we have The Wind, and The Mighty Haggis, also known as William. You all are awesome. All of you. Awesome. Awesome. Shout out to all of you. And with that, I'm going to draw this to a close because I don't actually know how much background footage I have 
and I tend to ramble, so yeah. I hope this was enlightening. I don't know what I hope this was, but I hope it was something. <laughs> I, it was certainly a channel update. If nothing else, I hope you enjoyed the footage of Cactus running around in the background being an Imperial Scout. And with that, I will see you on Tuesday with Chapter 1, Episode 1 of Honorless. It's gonna be a fabulous time. I will see you there. Have a good one.